this is no longer a quiz now the detective review has hap has happened now we need to just understand that how other what are the other reasons because of its circuit can fail and and as circuit designers we should avoid that hmm? so there can be so many sources of noise power supply noise ground bounds capacitive coupling charge shearing leakage noise feed through and the consequences are increased delay because you want the noise to settle down and then you will be able to latch the data or incorrect computations just like just like we saw in the previous examples those if the latch gets corrupted because of back gate driving or because of that diffusion input and there being a minus 500 millivolts on the input so whatever then you compute out of that will also go wrong are you able to see this so uh this noise is something that you should always be very careful about whenever you are designing circuits any kind of noise should not lead to corruption in your output now another important thing that i would want you to at least know about when when we uh talk of failures and failure modes is the concept of reliability what is reliability reliability means that uh, for how long will your chip function you see there is a warranty of 5 years 2 years 1 year 10 years how much warranty do you want on a chip that goes in your car 15 years sir 15 years hai na utna to chahiye so it means we're talking about a useful operating life period of 15 years what we are essentially saying is so what is observed is that if suppose 100 or 1000 or 10000 chips are manufactured now this is not just about chips this is about cars this is about anything hmm? so within the first let us say few tests itself many of them will fail so the failure rate will be high in the fab itself in the testing facility itself many will die a few will die after getting into the customer hands but then the failure rates will remain low for a very long time but after that the failure rate will start to climb again hmm this curve represents the shape of a bathtub therefore this is called as bathtub curve where this is called infant mortality and this rise is called as wear out and this is the useful lifetime you would want to increase the useful lifetime by as much as possible so you want to test when you when you design test for your circuits you would want that you would push this to as far in and this also as far out as possible so that operating life period increases but why do these failures happen hmm we are saying that uh, there are these failures happening here there are failures happening here why are these failures happening sir the reason for infant mortality could be that the uh, by, while making the device it, it was not made uh, according to what what it could, it should be and then wear out could happen because uh, the parts of the devices are wearing out with time so that is a natural process yes so there could be wear out of oxide so gate dielectric breakdown can happen interconnect wear out where we say that okay there was this wire that we made but uh, due to so much current flowing through it after some time it became open hmm? so there was an open there it it kind of broke huh? this could be because of what we call as electro migration i may have a slide after this on that hmm? over voltage failure because of over voltage some gate broke down latch up because of its huge current flow uh, started to flow and overheating happened and the device broke down soft errors what are soft errors do you know do you know what are soft errors sir excited particle injection into the drain region or source region of a mm -hmm. mos 
leading to formation of charge in the diffusion. So that might uh, discharge or charge up a node unconditionally. Okay. So soft error is called a soft error because as the name suggests, it's not permanent. Hmm? After some time, it will go away. Hmm? So what does this mean? If the soft error will go away after some time, what, the, what are we talking about? Uh, operating conditions, maybe? It means there is a transient event that happened. As Devajit said, there is a, there, see, you remember nuclear physics that we studied in 11th and 12th class? We talked about decomposition of uranium into uh, thorium and so on. You remember those equations? Half-life of uh, barium and half-life of uranium, nuclear reactions, everything. Huh? All of us studied that in school. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? So what, did, what happens when uranium breaks down? It also generates alpha particles, neutrons, beta particles, and so on. Hana? Yes. Now, uranium is very radioactive. We're not even talking about it yet. But in our ambient environment, there are all these alpha, beta, gamma particles there. And, okay, not very dense, not that the density is very, very high, but they are still there because some trace radioactivity is there all around us. So while we, they don't bother us, you know, they may cause a mutation in one or two of our cells in the body. The cell will naturally flush it out. People say you should fast on a regular basis so that, you know, autophagy happens and any tumorous or any cancerous cells, anything that is mutant dies out by its own. So all those things we talk about. So, but for chips, what happens in ICs? Oh, you can't fast ICs, huh? You can't make ICs fast. So you were storing a zero on some place. A high energy particle came that led to a, a charge generation. See, finally, that high energy particle came and it striked the substrate. Something growing through the substrate. At once, there is a flurry of electron and hole pairs that are generated. Due to voltages on the, on the die, voltages on the chip, those electron voltage, electron hole pairs will actually, electrons will go to one place towards the positive supply and holes would go towards the negative supply. Hmm? So it means there is some current that is flowing. When this flow of current happens, it can lead to flipping of data, corrupting of information. However, the next time you do the same operation, it may not reappear. You were adding two numbers, next you, you got a wrong output, you tried adding them again, now it is fine. So it was a soft error. It was a transient error. It happened and it will not, you will not be able to re-bring re, re that error into the system. That also you need to be careful of. Hmm? So we'll just look at all of these in, in a, just a little more detail, but I'm just introducing them to you on this slide. And what is also important is that we characterize reliability by talking of it in terms of how many failures if there are million devices, how many of them would fail in a thousand hours? That is called as failure in time. Or if, if I have a device which operates for this many hours, how many failures would happen? So mean time between failures and failure in time, FIT and MTBF are two terms that you may hear when you read or when you may, which you hear or read when you're talking about reliability. So if in an interview, someone asks you a question, uh, what is a fit, then you should not be, uh, what is a fit? Okay, you say that, okay, this is what I understand about it. I know about it, but I have not worked on it. Or if you do a project on reliability, then that's a different thing. Hmm? But you should at least know these terms. Hmm? So now I am saying that the car, you know, the car, the chip that you put in your car should work for 15 years. I want to test the operating life of a, of a chip. So should I actually take a chip, manufacture a chip and wait for 15 years to see what is the operating lifetime? Do I need to do that? 
Can I afford to do that? No. no Probably no. stick around. Naina. So what we do is we do accelerated life testing. So what is done is, uh, for example, we apply VDD stress. What does this mean? We said that uh, my chip will typically operate between 1.08 volts to 1.32 volts. I say I will test my chip at 1.6 volts. Because I am testing it at a high voltage, what would happen? This operating lifetime will reduce. Still higher voltage, it will further reduce. Still higher voltage, it will further reduce. So it is so much so, so I can also increase the temperature. So during testing, so I'm doing this only during testing. During testing, I apply VDD stress, I apply temperature stress. I can emulate degradation or reliability failures that would happen in 10 years within, let us say, one week. So can you wait for one week before you send out your chip to the customer? Yes. yes sir. But you cannot wait for 15 years. So to emulate different lifetimes, for example, to emulate 10 years, it could be one week. To emulate two years, it could be just one day. Within one day, you have degraded the device by two, two years. It could be just, uh, what do you say, five hours for uh, six months. So there are these. So what, what is done is this kind of uh, analysis is done as to uh, what kind of degradation is coming in? All you need is the slope, the slope of this curve. So you, you out of, say, let us say your lot has 1,000 dice, you take out 10 dice, 10 working dice you take out, and you put them in this kind of a accelerated lifetime testing setup. One die or one set of dice you will take out after 10 hours you will measure the failure rate. Another set of dies you will uh, take out after say 24 hours. You will measure what is the failure rate. Another set you will uh, take out after 48 hours. Uh -uh. This is ending my show. Queenie, you will restart. You able to see my presentation again? Yes, sir. Yeah. So what we do is we, we put different kinds of stress and we generate this, these lines. Then we say, okay, uh, at, at my target voltage, which is 0.9 plus minus 10%, my system will be 10 years of age, will, will live for 10 years. This lower curve will just hit it. The upper one would actually uh, possibly live even 20 years. Hmm? So this is how you do accelerated life testing. Sir, I have a question. 